I have a bone to pick with Iron Man. And I know, I know, unpopular opinion, but I gotta say, none of it makes any sense. Have you ever seen anything made of iron actually fly? Well, yeah, in World War II, they- Josh, you're supposed to be helping me justify this project. Look, the density of iron is 7.9 grams per centimeter cubed. Titanium, the second suit, 4.5 grams per centimeter cubed. It's 2023. We have all kinds of amazing, cool, fun materials like carbon fiber, which I might be biased towards because I like flying it. But anyway, carbon fiber is 1.75 grams per centimeter cubed. There's a reason that aerospace people mostly use carbon fiber. See, I'm just out here trying to make sure that Mr. Stark has the best flying experience possible from one pilot engineer to another. Your airplane is 78 years old and made of fabric and aluminum, and she hasn't bucked me out of the sky yet. And before you give me crap about the need for bulletproofness, let me remind you that I have sort of kind of a little bit already proven on this channel that carbon fiber can probably be made bulletproof when mixed with Kevlar. So anyway, when I reached into the metaphorical digital hat and drew the name James Bruton, I figured it was finally a great opportunity to give YouTube's OG Iron Man himself the upgrade he deserves. And if you don't know who our pal Jimmy B is, first of all, you're missing out but he is an amazing robotics engineer and he builds all kinds of cool little robots and electromechanical whimsical projects. And he's also a really great salsa dancer and the life of every party, but I couldn't figure out how to work that into a GIF. And his video will be right after mine in this lovely little Secret Santa playlist you're in. And so you can just click it when you're done watching this video. And then you can click the video where he made someone else something and it'll go in this lovely loop of 10 amazing channels that you should all check out. And then eventually I'll see you back here. So let's start. Ah! It's that time of year again, and once again, I am overbooked, running behind, and really, really stressed out. <laughs> okay, so I've wanted to try making something out of forged carbon for a really long time. And the thing is, I don't really want to try it for the first time on like a very structural thing. And so this project seemed like a perfect like application for it. The problem is that 3D printing molds is really, really difficult, especially when um, you've been avoiding 3D printing like the plague for years because you worked at a makerspace when it was still the first MakerBot era. And so like 90% of your time was just debugging the god dang things. Turns out printers have come a long, long way since then, but it still takes forever. I allotted three days for 3D printing on the molds and it took me like two and a half weeks. Now, the CAD for these was kind of a disaster, so there was a bit of post-processing to do in the real world to get my 3D printed molds to fit together, but it was a lot easier and faster than trying to fix those pretty borked CAD models or reprint, since each of those was like a full day or multi-day print. And it turns out, I have learned, it's really hard to play with meshes that were made in like Blender or Maya or something in a more, like in a parametric or more engineering focused CAD software. So, I just used a Dremel. And that's why you wear safety glasses, kids. Once the molds fit together and were lightly sanded, and by the way, I gave up on sanding after this mold because I realized it's a lot easier to just sand the carbon piece after. I gave them many, many generous coats of MAN 206 mold release. I think like six coats per mold. And then it was time to play with carbon! Look how pretty this stuff is. Once everything was ready, I mixed up my Bodle Toad epoxy and like always, I'm using the high performance two to one from Total Boat, which is my absolute go-to for anything composites. Like if it didn't fail me at Mach 2.3, it's not gonna fail me flying DHL to James's house. <laughs> To start, I painted a generous coat of epoxy on the inside of the mold and then sprinkled my chopped carbon fibers in there. And then I added more epoxy, sprinkled more carbon, and used my paintbrush to almost like stipple them in place. And I did figure out as I did more and more of these pieces, it, like the more vertical your paintbrush, the easier it is. And don't be fooled by the editing. This takes a while and a good bit of patience. It's pretty hard to get them neatly in there without like peeling up from the mold and making a mess. Close this thing up. All right, so teeny tiny girl life hack. As much as I climb, I never have the grip strength that I need. So I take my clamp and I put it on my other clamp and then I clamp my clamp with my clamp. And this gets around the fact that I can't, like if I tried to, if I tried to, see, I can't do it, but, and you can see it's working. 
And while that's curing, a quick word from our sponsor. A huge thank you to all the amazing sponsors who keep me able to build cool and kind of expensive things. <laughs> After filming all day, the last thing I want to think about is having to cook dinner. And on top of that, remembering to go to the grocery store before they close. Like, good luck to me for remembering that in the middle of a project. Plus, I hate ordering takeout all the time because it's expensive and not very healthy. And meal prepping is great, but that takes a lot of time and planning. And so that's where Factor comes in. Factor works with registered dietitians and gourmet chefs to use the best ingredients to ensure that every meal is nutritious and delicious. Every week, Factor offers 35 plus meals and 45 plus add-on options. There is so much to choose from keto to calorie smart, chef's choice and vegan and veggie options, as well as seafood, meat and plant-based meals. So I can pick what sounds yummy and make sure I'm maintaining a well-balanced diet. The best part is that factor meals come pre-prepared, fresh and never frozen. All I have to do is heat for two minutes and dinner is served. If I'm out of town, I can easily skip a week and go right back to meals being delivered when I'm home. So I never have to worry about what's for dinner. Factor really fits perfectly into my hectic schedule and I can still promise my mom that I'm eating healthy. Go to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Xyla50 at checkout for 50% off your first order. That's factor75.com or click the link below and use code Xyla50 to get 50% off your first factor box. So this stuff is peel play. You've seen me use this a lot. It uh, releases from epoxy so you can like do a layup put this over and then just peel this off once the epoxy is cured. So here's the thing, I don't actually remember how to vacuum bag. It's been a long time. I have all the stuff set up from when I did transparent wood, like way back in the day, in that when I was still in my one car garage. I don't know how many of you guys were here for that. And while I could go look it up, that would be the correct thing to do in this situation. I think I'm just gonna wing it. it can't be that hard, right? For these side pieces, since they're relatively flat, I decided to try vacuum bagging them. And my mistake here was not painting a generous enough coat of epoxy on the mold first, um, but I got a lot better at that, like at the more pieces I made. So now that this is pretty good in there, I'm actually gonna throw just like a little sheet of carbon fiber over this to sort of neaten it up. And it'll hopefully make post-processing this part a little bit easier. In hindsight, this sheet was not helpful and just made it thicker and heavier than necessary. Alas, live and learn. I put down my peel ply and then breather fabric and then realized I probably should have prepped the vacuum bag film with the butyl tape ahead of time. But at least I remembered to put the darts in. Overall, I got pretty close to a good vacuum bag, but I think there was a leak somewhere in the system because it couldn't hold like the fully strong vacuum um, without me pressing down. So overall, I kind of only just got like negative 13 inches of mercury. So I'll keep working on this setup. Good morning, it's tomorrow. It's the next day. I guess it's today for me, but it's the next day for you. Let's find out how this did. This is gonna be really hard to default. You know things are getting serious when Karis puts the camera on a tripod so she can help me wrestle my 3D printed parts. It sure as heck ain't perfect, but that's really cool. This is just a solid carbon part. And with a little bit of post-processing, time to demold the big one. That's gonna be way harder. I'm so nervous. I don't have time to print these again and try again. Like, it has to work. For the record, these are Harbor Freight chisels, so I don't feel bad about it at all. Tools are meant to be used, kids. Overall, I gotta say, my hot take from this experience is that archeologists would have probably had like a way easier job if ancient civilizations had been kind enough to cover all of their artifacts in Man 206 mold release. Because although this little archeological dig was kind of miserable, once it popped, the mold release really did its job. And it was, it just like popped out really cleanly. And this interior was just so difficult because of those eye sockets and the surgery I did on the mold to like make them fit together. Ruh row. That's not good. That's not good.
there's a exceptionally thin chance that this only crushed this side of the mold. So what happened here is perhaps my clamping of the clamps with the clamp accidentally clamped the clamps a little too much and it crushed the mold a bit. So the pattern of the infill of the 3D print actually became like imprinted into the final part. But the good news is it can be sanded off with lots of edginess, but it's workable. It's starting to go. It is. Oh! All right, ready? I can work with this. I'm really jazzed that it is salvageable because I basically only had one shot to do that. So with some sanding and maybe like a, a quick flood coat of epoxy, it's gonna work. Let's talk about the gloves for a second. Wearing gloves with tools like this is actually a terrible idea. A lot of people yell at me for not wearing gloves. The only reason I'm doing it is because I'm working with carbon, but I'm going to be really, really conscious of the fact that if my gloves make contact with the blade, I'm losing a finger. So don't wear gloves unless you're working with something worse. Once I had the mask smooth and looking a little bit less like Iron Man is having an acne problem, uh, there were a few air bubbles and gaps and voids in the surface of the carbon. And I'm not sure if that's avoidable if you don't vacuum infuse it, but if anyone has suggestions, like please let me know in the comments below because I'm super curious. Um, but I solved this by just painting a thin flood coat of epoxy over that and that will get into those bubbles and fill them so it's a nice smooth finish and it seals the carbon nicely and really makes it pop. So overall, I think it's a win-win. And then once that's cured, I could go in and like really give it that beautiful finish sanding, make sure the shapes are exactly how I want them. Um, and I went up to 400 grit and then after a good wipe down with isopropyl, it was time to start layering coats of spray on clear coat. And that's how I'm gonna get my final gloss. And look how pretty it is. It's just so shiny. Another day, another sheet of sandpaper. Now I do want to point out that the side panels were the only ones in this project I didn't do a flood coat of epoxy on and I regret it a lot. I think that the air pockets and the voids, like that puckering is really distracting. Um, and I wish I could just go back and like fill it in. But by the time I decided I needed to do that, I had run out of time. For the top helmet portion, I actually skipped the vacuum bag altogether and wanted to see if I could pull off basically a standard wet layup, but with forged carbon and not cloth. And the answer was yes. I actually think it came out a little better than the vacuum backed parts. The key was that the first coat of resin needed to be super, super thick. And you have to do a really good job of like stippling the fibers on. I think it behaves a little better if the brush is hitting the fibers vertically. Um, the other thing I found really helpful is you paint on the thick coat of epoxy and then let the fibers sit on top for a little bit and soak in on their own before you go in with the brush. And it kind of behaves, once you're going at it with the brush, it behaves a little bit like felting. Like once the fibers start matting together, it holds its shape really well. Okay, that's workable. That's about kind of what I was expecting. But you can see here how much it really still needs that flood coat to fill all the little voids. Not expecting that. Maybe we're getting better at this. <laughs> For this chin piece, I it's so deep and I was really dreading the demolding process because also I the CAD for the file was terrible. Uh, but somehow it just popped out. I imagine that this use is exactly what we had in mind when they designed like the best screwdrivers known to humankind. <laughs> Surface finish looks great. I think I've figured out how to do forged carbon fiber the right way now. So that's cool. Again, with the rushed CAD disasters on the mold situation, and I did start reprinting this one since it was like so far off of Canon, but I realized that I could just sculpt it in post and cut off all that extra carbon uh, and not have to remold the whole thing. So I just carefully crafted the chin by hand with the Dremel, and I think it looks pretty good. 
And the last piece, this is the back of the helmet and I really needed to ship this thing out ASAP. So I laid it up with medium hardener and then I put it out in the sun to bake and kick that epoxy faster and I was able to demold it in like two hours. <laughs> but I don't recommend that, that uh, advanced epoxy usage. Yeah, I'm getting good at this. And then it got its epoxy flood coat, a quick sanding, and the clear coat. Last piece is getting clear coat. It's starting to lose the magic. Like spraying clear coat onto forged carbon is so pretty. And now I'm just like, I gotta get it done. All right, so I got this weird like metallic anodizing spray paint at the auto store. I'm, I wanna see if it can still show the carbon fiber through it. I'm letting my intrusive thoughts win. Yes. And now it's just time to turn this thing Iron Man colors. All right, so we just accosted the Amazon truck to get the yellow spray paint, um, but it looks a little green. I wasn't super sold on the yellow and I considered doing more of like a Mark V paint job and leaving the mask black, but in the end, I am really, really glad I went for it. The yellow looked way better once it dried and then it had a clear coat over it. And it, like in the sun, it really looked like Carbon Iron Man. All right, now I know what you're thinking, and it is maybe, did this girl just spend that much time custom making a 100% forged carbon fiber Iron Man helmet just to hot glue it together? And the answer is yes, because she spent too long making the helmet and ran out of time. Yo, it's so good. I'm really glad we painted the yellow. The hot glue held up really well and it felt really strong, but the more thought I put into it, and since it has to ship via cargo plane, it'll get really, really cold and the hot glue might break. So early morning, the day I needed to ship this out, I trundled out to the workshop and actually just fiberglassed the seams. And as a quick finishing touch, I just 3D printed this display stand. And ooh, look at her shine. I am so obsessed with the way forged carbon looks, especially in the sunlight, like it glints so beautifully and I think that the this weird like anodizing spray paint tied the look together so well I'm just I'm so excited about how this turned out and I hope that James likes it I can't wait to watch his video and find out I feel like this is the hardest part of Maker Secret Santa every year is figuring out how to ship whatever the heck you built without it breaking in the mail and this is the first year I've done it actually that I have to ship internationally so The saddest part of all of this is I had to redo it into a new box at the DHL store so it could get inspected for customs. So I put packing peanuts all over the DHL store too. Woo! With that shipped, it is time for me to sit back, relax, and... Do you hear that? What is that sound? Wait, is that Santa's sleigh? Whoa! That was cool. Oh my gosh, it's my gift from Santa. And it looks like my Santa this year was Becky Stern, which is actually really funny because I just filmed a collab with Becky at her house while the Secret Santa builds were happening and the lengths she went to hide it from me are like comical. I should not cut so deep because Becky does really cool work and it would be very sad if I sliced it. Oh, instruction video. Well, well. I kinda wanna open the present. I don't read the instructions. Let's be real, I wanna know what it is. Sorry, Becky. Here. The original Kit Kat clock. Oh, and it has a wire coming out of it. I should probably watch the instruction video. I come back bearing both my laptop and tea because my laptop was dead, so I had to charge it for a couple minutes. I look at my cute mug. Shop that box in my cup. Okay, so 
we have our Kit Kat clock. This better not be making fun of the fact that when I stayed at her house, she had to vacuum everything because I'm allergic to cats. Becky, if this installs malware on my computer, I'm gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> okay, Zyla, here are your instructions. Sorry it isn't as straightforward as just plug it in. So then you press the reset button. Wait, okay. that's such a cool wow. idea. Open here. 100 greatest gifts. Top 100 gifts of the last 100 years. Starting strong. This is so cute. We got to make sure our batteries are seated. And then I plug it in. Ha <laughs> this is so fun. Kaylin's bow tie. Voila! And I'm pretty sure it watches you. Oh yeah. See the little camera in the snoop? It's so cute and so creepy, Becky. Why would you make it watch me? <laughs> oh, did you see that? What are you looking at? Literally, what are you looking at? That's so cute. Thank you so much, Becky. I love it. I'm gonna put it in my office.